Hello and welcome to Right Now for Monday the 30th of October 2017. I'm Tim Wilms. After months of speculation about when their election would be, Queenslanders will be going to the polls on Saturday the 25th of November. Despite denying that she was about to call the election and that she would only be visiting her nana this Sunday, Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk made a stop to Government House in Brisbane to call the election. Both Palaszczuk and Liberal National Opposition Leader Tim Nichols made their initial pitch to voters, which can best be described as vague. Energy, small business and infrastructure seem to be where both leaders believe their strength is. Both leaders also demonstrated they are eager to avoid the One Nation factor at this election, who have been polling at 15-20% to 20% of the primary vote, and are predicted to win 5-10 to 10 seats, potentially giving them the balance of power post-election. It is going to be a close election, as when it is a three-way race, uh, nobody can be confident to predict a result. Lost amongst all the other news of the past week in Australian politics was the Turnbull government rejected the recommendation of the Indigenous Referendum Council for an Indigenous advisory body to Parliament to be enshrined in the Constitution. The government correctly pointed out that such a referendum would be doomed to fail and would violate the principle of all citizens having equal civil rights. It would appear that Indigenous leaders thought that with constitutional recognition of Indigenous people having bipartisan and strong public support, they could demand even more. But with the constitutional proposal now in its 10th year of consultation, they may end up getting nothing. Over the weekend, the biggest weasel in the Federal Parliament, Defence Industry Minister Christopher Pine, was exposed as being up to his old tricks again. It was revealed that if his South Australian seat of Sturt is abolished or has an unfavourable redistribution, he will challenge Liberal MP in the neighbouring seat of Boothby, Nicole Flint. Flint was only elected at the 2016 federal election and is considered a future star of the Conservative wing of the party. We also learned that back in 2009, when Malcolm Turnbull was about to lose the Liberal leadership, that Pine rang the then director of GetUp, Simon Sheik, to get the activist group support for Turnbull, who was championing Labor's emissions trading scheme. This is certainly embarrassing given the Australian Workers' Union raids of the past week, which were part of an investigation into a donation they gave to GetUp in 2006. Catalonia's parliament finally declared its independence from Spain last Friday. Madrid has responded by dismissing the Catalan government and dissolving its parliament with fresh regional elections to be held on December 21st this year. Spanish Prime Minister Mourinho Raoy has declared himself to be the top decision maker now in Catalonia. Madrid is determined to quash this independence movement despite the results of the recent independence referendum. If former Catalan leader uh, Carlos uh, Pigemont is returned in the new elections, then surely that plus the independence referendum result itself should allow the Spanish government to let Catalans be their own people and nation. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and check back here tomorrow to see what is happening right now. Then.